हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू फाइनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग बिकॉम सेकेंड सेमिस्टर एन ई पी कोर्स पेपर अफिलेटेड टू कर्नाटक यूनिवर्सिटी वी आर ऑन लेसन टू ऑफ दिस यूनिट इंसॉलवेंसी अकाउंट्स बिफोर आई स्टार्ट आई वुड लाइक टू क्विकली रिकैप्चर वाट आई डिड इन द प्रीवियस लेसन इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई डिस्कस शॉर्ट टाइप टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन एंड एंसर्स एंड मेथड ऑफ अकाउंटिंग ऑन इंसॉलवेंसी इन प्रीवियस लेसन आई टॉक अबाउट brief information about meaning of insolvency and garner versus morare rule today let us know the types of insolvency and insolvency laws in india meaning of insolvency insolvency means the asset of a person are less than the liabilities that is the person's liabilities are more than his assets such a person are called as insolvent persons solvent partner is a partner whose personal assets are more than his personal liabilities so who is solvent and who is insolvent this is the meaning of insolvency that we have learned in previous class now let us uh, today's class to know the types of insolvency and the insolvency laws applicable in india there are two types of insolvencies one insolvency of a partner and insolvency of a firm insolvency of a partner if a person or a partner having debit balance in his capital account is unable to bring the necessary cash to make up the de capital deficiency he is said to be an insolvent partner irrecoverable debit balance is called loss arising due to the insolvency of a partner when a partner is insolvent such a capital deficiency will be borne by the remaining solvent partners such a capital deficiency called capital loss which should borne by the solvent partners in a capital standing ratio as per the garner versus rorare rule insolvency laws in india an insolvent in a legal sense a person whose liabilities exceed more than his assets and whom an order of judicial must be passed by the competent court if in case of insolvent person the insolvency proceeding must be taken by the court so when we declare the person is insolvent the person must be passed with the judicial court or by the competent court he must passed uh, court must be passed an insolvency proceedings then only such a person is known as insolvent there are two acts which are applicable in india dealing with the insolvency affairs in india one the presidency towns insolvency act 1990 that applies only to the person who is residing in the presidency towns like mumbai kolkata and chennai the second act the provincial insolvency act 1920 which applies to the person residing in the rest of india insolvency act are applicable to the following one is individuals second partnership firms and hindu undivided families but in case of joint stock companies liquidation is used not insolvency and the companies act is applicable in such a case insolvency takes place only when partner is unable to pay its liabilities but in case of liquidation liquidation takes place only when the company has sufficient amount to pay its debts now let us summarize when a person be declared as insolvent he must has the following one he must be a debtor and must have inadequate assets for repayment of in full of his liabilities and he must have committed an act of insolvency that is competent by the proceedings passed by the competent court 